Welcome. I'll begin by interpreting the problem statement. This problem involves a tank and piping system. The diameter of the pipe, that's this diameter right here, is 1.5 centimeters, and the total length of the pipe is 10 meters. That's the length shown here. There are two 90 degree elbows, both with threaded fittings. Those elbows are located right here and right here. The vertical distance from the water surface to the pipe exit is 5 meters. We're told to neglect the velocity of the water in the tank. Goal 1 is the exit velocity of the water. That's this velocity right here. Goal 2 is the height h of the water jet. That's this height here. The water temperature is 20 degrees C. The water temperature is specified at 20 degrees C. Let me connect this with what I already know. I see viscous flow through this piping system and I see three sources of head loss. Source one of head loss is associated with flow at the inlet. Source two of head loss is associated with flow through these threaded elbows. And source three of head loss is associated with viscous flow in the pipe itself. Now, flow in the pipe can be either laminar or turbulent. I'll guess that the flow is turbulent because there's five meters of elevation head and the pipe diameter is about half an inch relatively large. To find my first goal which is the velocity at the exit of the pipe I believe I can apply the energy equation from section one at the top of the reservoir to section two at the exit of the pipe. To solve for my second goal which is the height of the free jet I believe I can draw a streamline through the jet to find a point 2 and point 3 on this streamline and then apply the Bernoulli equation. To create my documentation, I describe the situation in one sentence, then I sketch my system diagram. Next, I add relevant information to this diagram. I assume steady state, which means that properties are not changing with time. I assume turbulent flow which means that the kinetic energy factors everywhere will be 1.0. Later in my solution, when I needed properties, I wrote them in this section so they're easy to find. So this shows the minor loss coefficient for the elbow. This shows the minor loss coefficient for the entrance. This shows the sand roughness height value there. This shows that these came out of table 10.5. And lastly, for water, table 8.5 shows that the kinematic viscosity is 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. Goal number 1 is the mean velocity of the water at the pipe exit. Goal number 2 is the height of the fountain, also at the pipe exit. To find the velocity at 2, I apply the energy equation. Section 1 is the reservoir surface. Section 2 is the pipe exit. I write the general form of the energy equation. Then I do term by term analysis, which is shown in purple. This leads to my reduced equation. Let's look at this in more detail. The reduced equation tells me that the elevation head at section 1 is balanced by the head loss in the system plus the velocity head at section 2. My goal appears here. The elevation head at 1 here is known and my head loss is unknown, so this becomes my new goal. To find the total head loss in the system, I apply the combined head loss equation, which I'm, I've written here, and this shows me the total head loss is the head loss in the pipes, plus the head loss in the components and transitions. Next, I substitute in terms and do term by term analysis. My analysis reveals that my goal is here, and I know all the variables except for the friction factor, so the friction factor becomes my new goal. To find the friction factor here, I apply the Swamy-Jane correlation for turbulent flow, and when I do my term-by-term -term analysis here, I can see that all the variables I need are known. Thus, I can find the friction factor. The number of equations is exactly equal to the number of unknowns. The equations are the energy equation, the combined head loss equation, and the Swamy-Jane correlation. The three unknowns are the velocity at the exit, V2, 
the head loss in the system and the friction factor in the pipe, F. Find the height of the fountain. I'm going to apply the Bernoulli equation from point 0.2 to point 0.3 where I've defined a streamline here and point 0.2 is this location on the streamline and point 0.3 is this location on the streamline. My datum is set at the elevation of point 0.2 and my goal is the height h. I write the general form of the Bernoulli equation, do term by term analysis shown in purple and my reduced equation is right here and this shows that the problem goal the height of the fountain can be found once I've calculated V2. My plan is to solve equations 1, 2, and 3 and calculate V2. Then I'll check the Reynolds number and make sure the flow is turbulent because I've got an assumption in here. And step 3, I'll calculate the fountain height H using the Bernoulli equation. When we solve pipe flow problems and the flow is turbulent, Sometimes the problems can be solved by algebra, but other times the equations are coupled and nonlinear and we cannot solve them without algebra. This is a problem like this, so it's not possible to do this with algebra. For this type of problem, by far the easy way to do this is to program the equations on a computer and have the computer find the solution for it. This is the way I always do these. But I'm going to show you an old technique called successive substitution because this can be done with a hand calculator alone or with an Excel spreadsheet. To implement successive substitution, I'm going to begin by deriving an equation for the velocity at 2 as a function of the friction factor. So I write the energy equation here, then I substitute in the combined head loss equation. Then I put numbers in to this equation and I'm going to solve for V2. And I'm going to omit the steps. And here's the equation I got for V2 as a function of the friction factor. There's the friction factor right there. And everything else in this equation is known. Next step in successive substitution is to guess the value of the friction factor and then calculate V2. So I guess that the friction factor is 0.035. I substitute it in right there and when I put the numbers into the equation I get that V2 is 1.919 meters per second. Step 3 in the method of successive substitution is I'm going to use my new value of V2, calculate Reynolds number, use Reynolds number to calculate a new value of the friction factor and then use the new value of the friction factor to calculate a new value of V2. Here's how that goes. I take V2 here I substitute this value into my Reynolds number calculation and get a new value of Reynolds number of 28,800. Then I'm going to take this value and substitute it in to the correlation for my friction factor. So here's my friction factor calculation and then I calculate a new friction factor of 0 0.0404. Using this friction factor I next calculate a new value of V2 and that comes out to be 1.8008. So repeat step 3. That means take this value of V2. From this value I will calculate a new value of Reynolds number. From this new Reynolds number I'll calculate a new value of F and from this F I'll calculate a new value of V2. We can now summarize the ideas of successive substitution. Begin by deriving an equation for the velocity as a function of the friction factor. Here's how the loop works. Get a trial value of the friction factor. From this, calculate velocity. From velocity, calculate Reynolds number. From Reynolds number, then calculate a new value of the friction factor and a new value of the velocity. Then check and see if the new velocity is approximately equal to the old velocity. If it is, then stop. If not, use the friction factor from here and repeat the loop. This table from Excel shows the method. Get F, then calculate V. From V, calculate Reynolds number. From Reynolds number, calculate a new value of F. Take this value of F and it becomes your new value. Then calculate velocity, calculate Reynolds number, 
get a new value of f, then take this value of f and it becomes your new one, and repeat this loop. Repeat this process until the velocity is relatively constant, as shown here. The answer is that the velocity is 1.8 meters per second. To find the final problem goal, I apply the Bernoulli equation. The work is shown here. The height of the fountain is 0 0.165 meters. That concludes this video. I hope you found it very useful. Thank you very much for listening.